It's the finale, and this is a very special finale because we have Yosef here today behind the camera. Hello! Hello! <laughs> okay, let's get into the challenge. Welcome to the final. You should be very, very proud of what you've achieved. Well done. Okay, for your main make challenge, the judges would like you to make a pyramid vase centerpiece. We're looking for that statement piece. Give us that wow factor. My inspiration for this challenge is actually the last throwdown challenge video. If you didn't see that, I used recycled clay to make subtle variants between the different pieces, but with pops of color. In this piece, I want to experiment with recycled clays again, but this time I want to see what happens when I add colorful glaze. So my period vase is going to be made up of 15 different pieces, all assembled together to three different main vase structures. I'm going to add carving and both matte and glossy glazes. So the form is going to be very simple, but I think with these different textures, it could look really cool. Okay, so we're done with throwing. I'm so, so happy with these pieces. The two round ones in the middle, I think, I think it'll work. I think it'll be okay. Like they're looking very irregular right now, but I think once everything is on them, once the carving is in, they're going to be okay. So now I need to let everything dry out um, and we'll get back to them tomorrow. So see you then. Good morning. Good morning. It's the next day and my pots have dried out overnight. They're still a little bit on the wet side. So um, trimming might be a little tricky, but we're going to just try it. The main problem though that I'm dealing with is this guy is supposed to sit on top of here and it does not. <laughs> this is not narrow enough. So I'm going to have to put a slab on top of here in order for it to actually sit. I thought about putting a coil along the edge, but I just don't think that that's going to be stable enough so that this piece doesn't just fall through. <laughs> so let's get started with that and then we'll head on to trimming. So. Oh, why is it squeaking? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go for one centimeter thickness gauges just to give it a little bit more strength. Good thing about them being a little wet is that everything's going to glue together really easily. I should cut this first. Okay, now that our slab is attached, I'm just gonna let this harden up a little bit because if I put any pressure on this now, it's just gonna bow in. So I'm going to put this in front of the fan for a little bit while we work on the other pieces. <laughs> this Boden Schöne machen.
Okay, next we need to make the bottom for this piece because you saw me yesterday throwing it upside down, but of course I need, it needs a bottom. So I'm just going to roll out a slab for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this over here. <laughs> That's too scary. Okay, I'm using uh, centimeter thickness gauges again. Hopefully I have enough clay. So it's not quite enough clay. Um, I'm just gonna roll it a little bit thinner. Hopefully it's gonna be fine. It's the problem when you're working with recycled clay. You can't just open another bag. So I'm gonna let it dry out a little bit like this. Um, I flipped it because I want this inside to sink down a little bit. With all pottery, you prefer to have the weight distributed on the edges of the pieces as it just makes a stronger pot. Um, and so because the slab is still wet, it's kind of bowing in a little bit. That's what I want it to do. Not too much though, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Um, and I'm just gonna let this firm up a little bit before I trim off the excess. So. Okay, I'm going to add the spouts now, uh, which is very exciting because I think now it's really going to take its form. But before I do that, I'm just gonna add a very thin coil around this connection here. I don't know if you can see it, but I just don't like that it's clearly two pieces stuck together. I want it to look like very distinct forms, but not assembled. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but does to me. So I basically don't like to see this crack here. So I'm just going to jam a little coil in there and then I'll carve out like to define those different shapes once it's hardened up a little bit. Okay. So I think the key to attaching these is making sure they're quite upright. So I don't want them sticking out like this because then the flowers are just going to blob out like that. Um, so I'm going to cut them quite dramatically, like okay, something like this. So we're going to lose a lot of it, but that's fine. If you've ever made a teapot before, this is like the exact same thing. We're just adding a spout, but a bunch of them. I think that's, that's the tricky part. If I was just going to be making like a teapot, I'd probably finesse the spout a lot more and try and make it match really well. But we have 12 spouts to attach today. So I think I'm gonna just kind of like loosely attach them and then I'll fill in any gaps with a coil. I think that's fine. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. I'm going to let it firm up a little bit, move on to the second spout, and then we can come in and smooth it out a bit more and make it perfect. But I'm happy with that angle. I think whoosh, that's what we're going for. <laughs> like an alien. <laughs> okay, this is done now. All of my spouts are attached. That took ages. <laughs> Who would have thought that 12 spouts would take a long time? But let's have a look at how they look together. That's crazy. 
This is just insane. Okay. <laughs> I guess um, let's move on to carving then. So my idea is to carve in different directions on the different pieces so it looks a bit like mismatched but somehow still unified. Yeah, let's get to it. Spouts are definitely going to get in the way. <laughs> I'm glad that I did four each. I think that was worth it. Okay, I think I'm going to stop now <laughs> before I do too much. I think it's perfect, but um, I know I could just keep touching it and uh, it would be too much. So. Let's call this finished. Now everything needs to dry out completely before it goes into the kiln. Not sure yet what I'm going to do with the glazing, but I really do want to add some color to this, so um, I'll have some time to think about it. So everything's going to go into the kiln for a bisque fire, then I'm going to glaze everything, and I'll get back to you guys with the final result. <laughs> Wow, guys, I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's like a little different than I expected, but also exactly what I wanted. What surprises me most is how dark this clay got. This clay is meant to be more like this color here, um, but something with the glaze reaction, I don't know what happened, but I actually really like it because it's adding a bit more contrast, a bit more texture. Um, so I'm really happy with that. But let's see if it holds water. So far, so good. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for tagging along with me while I work my way through season six of The Great Pottery Throwdown. Maybe now they'll let me on the show. <laughs> Consider this my application tape. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, you might also like this video that I'm linking right here. This is from a previous episode of The Throwdown uh, where I built a lamp. So if you're interested, go check that out next. Bye friends. Oh.